Robin Powell's been talking to Professor Paul Thornalley about the discovery of a link between low levels of thiamine, more commonly known as vitamin B, and diabetes. Last year we published the outcome of research where we surveyed thiamine status of diabetic patients in the United Kingdom and this was the outcome of a Diabetes UK funded research project over the previous two years and we found for the first time that diabetic patients both type 1 and type 2 were suffering quite a severe thiamine deficiency in the blood plasma. Thiamine levels were decreased by 80% from normal healthy non-diabetic subjects. Since that we've had increased awareness of both uh, clinicians and patients of the possibility of thiamine deficiency in diabetes and it stimulated uh, further trials of thiamine supplementation in diabetic patients to see if there can be health benefits and also increased funding coming in to survey thiamine status in diabetic populations in other countries and, un and to begin to understand further the mechanism of the deficiency in diabetic patients in the UK. The reasons for this thiamine deficiency seems to be poor handling of the vitamin by the kidney in diabetes. Normally the kidney filters blood and filters the, the thiamine. Thiamine is then taken back up into the body to prevent loss. In the diabetic state this reuptake is markedly uh, deficient. It, there's a decline in reuptake and we wash thiamine out of the body. What would your advice to patients be now? Should they start taking thiamine supplements, should indeed they start eating more thiamine rich food? I think at this point I would encourage diabetic patients to keep an awareness of developments in this area because there are ongoing clinical trials to assess if there are benefits, health benefits from thiamine supplements. When we know the outcome of them and the scientific community are convinced of the findings, if positive, then there will be a call for thiamine supplementations of all diabetic patients, probably from early stages of diabetes onwards. Correcting this thiamine deficiency is unlikely to be achieved by change in diet, because normally we, ha we have a dietary allowance of thiamine, a requirement of about one milligram of thiamine. But the washout of thiamine in diabetes is of the order of 16 to 24 fold. We might consider that we would want to take in then 16 to 24 fold more thiamine to counter this washout and that cannot be achieved by dietary change. How exciting is this development? I think it's probably very important because one thing we need to do is prevent the development of vascular disease, blood vessel disease in diabetes, particularly damage to the kidney because it carries with it a profound increase in risk of heart disease. Advanced kidney disease increases the risk of heart disease by about 20 fold. We cannot allow this to stand if we want to provide the best care for diabetic patients. We know that if you control blood glucose and blood pressure, we can decrease this risk. But in, particularly in type 2 diabetic patients, there is still a high residual risk. Two-thirds of the risk still remains even if we control blood glucose and blood pressure. Thiamine supplements may be a way of addressing this high increased residual risk of developing heart disease and damage particularly to the kidney, eyes and peripheral nerves. I think it's very exciting if it can help people with diabetes to manage their diabetes better and to keep their blood sugar levels well balanced and to cut out uh, all the possible complications that you get from diabetes, I think that's great. There's an awful lot of work done on just generally good eating and a good diet and these sort of things, but sometimes it's these little things that can make the real difference between a well-controlled diabetic and one who cannot control it. 9.8, that's the toast I had when I left home. If it's found to be a link and if it means taking a supplement to control it, then yes, I would take it. Some might ask why it's taken so long for this link to be established. The reason probably why it's not been discovered before is the conventional clinical assessment of thiamine status is masked in diabetes. So if you use a conventional measure, which is to measure an activity of a thiamine dependent enzyme in red blood cells, they don't show, report this thiamine deficiency. But the, it's the plasma levels of thiamine that are deficient and probably in selected tissues where high glucose does most harm. So you really have to 
measure thiamine status comprehensively to detect this. And we also reported that probably in the future, the way we assess thiamine status clinically should be modified so that we can detect these, these uh, instances of low plasma thiamine. What about prevention? Is there any evidence that a thiamine-rich diet makes you less likely to develop diabetes? Interesting question also that's now emerging. There have been long-term studies that suggested decreased risk of developing type 2 diabetes particularly is associated with high fiber content in the diet. And one of the, one of the consequences of having a high fiber diet is a high thiamine content in the diet. So researchers have suggested that thiamine intake may decrease the risk of developing type 2 diabetes, but this has to be investigated and prevention studies have to follow patients over a long period of time, well pre-diabetic patients, people without diabetes over a long period of time, they're expensive, but it, we may find in future that thiamine supplements may decrease this risk.